You know, I, I think back... Don't know about you, but I think back to when I was 16, I was just, literally just left home to go to London to Chelsea. <laughs> Would not have said boo to a goose. Right. You know, and it's not the talent level, because this, this guy's, you know, super talented. It's the physicality of going into a men's game. That, that's the big... When you come through uh, in the youth teams and you go into what we call the reses or the reserves mm -hmm. before you make the progression, you go from playing against under 16 and 17 and 18 guys your own age, you go into the reserves and there's some hardened pros in there that are either coming back from injury or they're dropped and out the team. And you look at them and go, my God, look at the strength and the, you know, the power of these guys and that's what I need to be. And so when you see these youngsters going straight in to the elite level now, not only handling the pressure, but it's the physicality aspect of it that they're going in with, and you know, you saw the Mallorca team, they're big guys, they're big strong guys, so the ability to go in there and handle yourself as a 16-year-old and perform, I mean, it's quite scary what lies ahead for this guy. I mean, yeah. it, it, the world is his oyster if, if, if he remains uh, injury-free, lucky, and keeps his head down. There's a long way to go, but, but boy, what a future he has. We've seen Chavi blooding quite a few youngsters, Stevie, mm. like Mark Hughes starting, but what has been so impressive about Lamine Yamal is that it's not just been a one-game wonder. It's not no. just scoring a winner late on. It's the consistency of it, and you could argue he has been Barcelona's best player this season. Yeah, I mean, Luis is talking about how they were set <coughs> to get him the ball on, on a 1v1 v one situation, which makes complete sense. And, and I think as far as the, the being able to play so many youngsters, a lot of that has got to do with the way the game's refereed today. OK. Because they're not stepping on the field and they're not worried about somebody kicking them or, or bullying them physically. They can actually play their game. And the fact that they've got the pace and somewhat more strength settling than we had when we were 16 means that they play with the freedom. They're not looking over the shoulder waiting for somebody kicking them. They're, they're actually just concentrating on doing all the things that, that they want to do as far as technique and ability is concerned. And they, and they don't have to think about somebody trying to hurt them. So an interview recently, or, a, or, a, or an after-match interview, or a, an interview that he gave, Rafinha... Well, which was it? Well, my memory's a bit busy. <laughs> so I'm, I'm just trying to cover my bases here. It was an interview, all right? <laughs> right. Did it well. Let me get to the point where he was asked about recently been left out yep. when... Lamine Yamal has played, and he, he was very, uh, shall we say, upbeat about it. He said, yes. oh, it's great to see the kid. But is he really? Yeah. You know, when you see this kid coming through, all right, he's had his injury problems, Rafinha, been in and out, been suspended as well. But he's watching this kid playing on the right, coming in on his left foot, doing things that Rafinha knows he can be doing and, and should be doing. And I would just wonder if he's now thinking to himself, actually, maybe it doesn't look quite so good, this youngster coming in and doing this, because... At this moment in time, if you had the choice between the two in that position, yes. you, you, you'd go for the youngster, wouldn't you? Most definitely. Over Rafinha. And it's not even a debate. 1-1, one, one, of course, going into the second leg at Monster Week. Uh, Luis is still with us. I want to start with you, Jules. Jules, just give us some insight into Napoli over recent weeks going into this tie. That's the thing, Dan, because until tonight, they've been really good. The last two games in the league they won, including against Juventus last Sunday. And there was that momentum building and Torino are not an easy team to, to play against. They're very intense, they run a lot, they press a lot. It's a bit chaotic the way they play, but they, they just it must be annoying to play against them. And it was the case tonight because Napoli had a lot of the ball, they had the best chances, really they could have won this game. They considered two shots on target. One is the goal that we've just seen on a set piece, on a second phase of a set piece. But they could not really get the control on the game because Torino is just always there. They contest everything. They're there. Which should be a very different game, obviously, against Barcelona. But I guess they wanted to continue that momentum to win again, make it three wins in a row in the league that would have looked better mm. to try to finish top four, top five to qualify for the Champions League next season if, if that fifth place takes you there. But they're still unbeaten in the... Calzona, the new manager, of course. So the momentum is still there, but it's just slightly disappointing after the good performance we saw against Juventus a week ago. Of course, the big talking point for Barcelona going into that second leg is the players who aren't available. We saw Araujo suspended today. He will be back involved. However, the rest, big question marks if any of them uh, are going to be available. Uh, Rafinha, of course, subbed off. We'll wait news on him. Stevie, given this list, this is a really tricky game to call, isn't it? I think if you're Napoli... You cannot be anything other than upbeat about going and 
to play against Barcelona. Yes. And if you're sitting watching, never mind recently, but for the majority of the season, if you're sitting doing, doing video with the players, you go in thinking, well, well, this is Barcelona away. And by the time you finish watching it, you're going, hold on a second. Yeah. What have we got to be scared about? You know, other than the reputation of, of the players with the names on the back of the jersey, you are away from home, but it's not the same. And it's not the camp now. No, it's not the camp now. So if you're Napoli, you're, 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 the basics you're talking about are don't make any mistakes. If we don't make any mistakes, we absolutely have got the players and the talent to go to Barcelona and actually outplay this team and win this game. So for me, if I'm Nap Napoli's coach, I am 100% bashing into them how much that they can win this game and win comfortably if we do what we're good at, 100%. The problem with that is that Napoli are nowhere near the team that they were, either. But they've still got Ozerman up front and Cavazzaglia to get up and support, and mm. they've still got good players, they just haven't played particularly well. Look, Barcelona probably had one of the better performances of the season, which is it was not a high bar, as you know, <laughs> in Naples. They actually played OK over there by their standards. I don't think Napoli played well at all. But then you look at Napoli going into this game away from home, this Barcelona back line, even when it's been at full strength, has been awful. Mm. And it's not at full strength at the moment. Koundé's had a poor season. You know, Cancelo's going to probably have to play left back. Can't defend. You've got youngsters at centre back. And you've got Christensen, you know, centre half, patrolling in the midfield in front. Without Pedri, uh, without Gavi in there, without De Jong. So that leaves sort of Gundogan. Come on, I mean, you're never going to get, you know, unless Barcelona's financial troubles continue, and they continue to, to decline as they have this season, you're probably not going to get a better opportunity. To go in here, as you said, it's the Monja week, it's not the Camp Nou, it's a, it's a pretty poor side, they're, they're disjointed, they, they're not, they can't boss teams like they used to, and they've been terrible defensively. If that doesn't give you a G up for Napoli yeah. to go there and believe you can do it, I don't know what will. Uh, let's take a look at how the odds uh, have things set for ESPN. But this is to go through, obviously, uh, to the quarterfinals. Barcelona, big favourites, 5 to 2 on. Napoli coming in at 7 to 10. You're going to more than double your money uh, if you back the Italian side. Uh, Luis, are we being harsh on Barca? So I think that uh, at the moment, yeah, he's favourite. It's true that he's going to come. No, I understand the guys uh, and the concern about uh, not being created, the atmosphere that Barcelona will need to, to go against a Napoli. That is true that it's not the Napoli that we saw last year, but it's going to be a better Napoli than in the first leg. I think Alzona has had the time of working with the team to put it all together, to understand what he, he wants for the, from the players uh, from now to the future. And you see the change in the last three games. It's true that today draw, have draw but two, uh, two uh, games won in the last uh, two weeks. So that means that they're going to arrive with a, a better feeling on the field and they're going to put up a big, big difficulties for Barcelona. But I still think that if Barcelona finds their way of play like they did with that intensity, with that flow, with that uh, idea of trying to hurt Napoli, they will have the chance. But it's not going to be easy again. This Napoli is not the one before, but it's not the one from two months ago. Jules, it was a pretty boring week in the Champions League. You take a look at this tie. Indeed, Arsenal playing, of course, Porto on the same day as well. It's really interesting, isn't it? Really tough to, to kind of define who is going to be the team they're going to go through. Yeah, massively. I mean, we said it a little bit, but this is a better Napoli side than three weeks ago. There's no doubt. Remember the first leg? The new manager just had one day training the day before mm. and that was it. And yes, his ideas are the ones of Spalletti's because he was Spalletti's assistant. But still, it was one day. Three weeks down the line, they beat Juventus, we've said that. They smashed Sassuolo and they're a much better team. Are Barcelona a better team than they were three weeks ago? They're not because in between they lost Pedri and De Jong to start with. Plus, as we mentioned, the list of people are already. So I think it was 50-50 before the first leg. The 1-1 draw in the first leg, no away goals anymore. It's still very much 50-50 for me, even if Barcelona, obviously, being at home, the second leg should be an advantage. Although I'm not sure I'm on Drake that we can call it an advantage for them. And we've seen that this season at times. So it's, it's a great game. It's 50-50. I would, I would go for Napoli, personally. Mm. I think Varas Kelly and Ozyman and Politano on the counter could destroy this Barca team. I mean, Varas Kelly against Jules Koundé has to be the matchup of the night, really. And if Koundé can't stop Kavaskelia, sorry, in the, in the game, I think this could be Napoli to win.